life on Earth is teeming with cyclical patterns. We experience the alternating rhythms of day and night, witness the changing seasons, and observe the ebb and flow of the tides. Many of these changes occur over relatively short periods and can be predicted with remarkable precision. However, there are other cycles that operate on much larger timescales and can be more challenging to forecast. These cycles operate on a vast timescale, and while they are fascinating, they are unlikely to significantly impact our lives. Yet, there is one climate cycle that undeniably affects us all, the El Niño Southern Oscillation, commonly known as El Niño and La Niña. Although El Niño and La Niña originate in the Pacific Ocean, their effects are felt across the globe, and by some accounts the most severe consequences are becoming more frequent. Over the past few decades, the destructive repercussions of El Niño and La Niña have included devastating floods, prolonged droughts, famines and mass die-offs of marine life. To illustrate, a severe El Niño in 1998 led to an estimated 16% of the world's coral reefs perishing, initiating a catastrophic mass bleaching event that continues to this day. The El Niño Southern Oscillation is a worldwide phenomenon that undoubtedly influences all of us. So, what exactly are El Niño and La Niña, and how are they connected? Furthermore, what are their global impacts to a captivating climate cycle that became the stuff of legend centuries before science could elucidate it? If you find the name El Niño more reminiscent of a folk tale than a scientific concept, you're on to something. In the 17th century, fishermen noticed periods of warmer water and poor fishing, often peaking around Christmas time. They referred to it as El Niño de la Navidad, which translates to the boy of the nativity or the Christmas child. It wasn't until the late 19th and early 20th centuries that scientists began to connect various, seemingly unrelated regional events scattered across the globe. By the mid 20th century, they realized that these were not isolated incidents, but rather phases of a global cyclic phenomenon known as the El Niño Southern Oscillation NSO. The ENSO typically fluctuates with an average interval of five years, though the cycle can span anywhere from two to seven years. We have been monitoring these cycles for decades, but they have existed for far longer. To comprehend why the El Niño Southern Oscillation occurs, let's first examine what happens in the Pacific Ocean under normal conditions. Winds blow along the equator from east to west due to the Coriolis effect, resulting from the Earth's rotation. Here's a fascinating tidbit. If the Earth didn't rotate, air would circulate north to south, from the high-pressure poles to the warmer, low-pressure equator. As it happens, air does circulate from the poles, but it curves as it approaches the equator, creating a circumferential band that extends 30 degrees north and south of the equator. This band, often called the horse latitudes, causes air in the northern hemisphere to deflect southwest and air in the southern hemisphere to deflect northwest. This westward-moving air is known as the trade winds, and they have significance beyond the adventures of 18th century pirates. As the trade winds blow westward across the Pacific Ocean, they drag warm water from the coasts of South America towards Asia. This movement of warm water westward leads to the upwelling of colder water to replace it, a phenomenon known as upwelling. The cold, nutrient-rich upwelling water supports phytoplankton, which forms the base of marine ecosystems by feeding a variety of fish and their predators. Consequently, any disruption to this system can have profound effects on marine life. Now envision El Niño as a perturbation of this normal state. During El Niño, the trade winds weaken, causing the warm water that should be moving towards Asia to accumulate near the coastal Americas. This buildup of warm water results in decreased upwelling of cold water. Consequently, a zone of warm air and water forms further east in the Pacific. With reduced upwelling, the fish that depend on phytoplankton either migrate or perish. Additionally, the Pacific jet stream, which typically crosses North America, shifts southward during El Niño. This results in warmer and drier conditions in the northern United States and Canada, while the Gulf Coast and many parts of coastal South America experience increased rainfall. During more severe El Niño events, Peru and Ecuador face catastrophic rain and flooding. For example, the severe El Niño of 1997-98 to brought devastating floods to Peru, 
causing bridge collapses and burying entire shanty towns under a meter-thick layer of mud. Approximately a quarter of a million people were displaced from their homes, and the normally arid region of Tumbes received a staggering 16 times its average annual rainfall. Beyond the Americas, El Nino initiates a cascade of events that significantly alter global weather patterns. The increased rainfall in South America often coincides with severe drought in South Asia and Australia, leading to food shortages and famine. In India, famines have been documented, while delayed monsoon seasons in Australia can result in immensely destructive bushfires. Australia's bushfires, fueled by vast expanses of grasslands, are among the most destructive on Earth, and concerns about a potential event in 2023 are already emerging, especially given recent warming trends. You may recall that in 2020, during a non-El Nino year, bushfires created apocalyptic scenes, scorching 50 million acres of land. Australia stands as a literal tinderbox, with El Nino looming like a metaphorical flamethrower, prompting local authorities to prepare for the worst. On a global scale, the average surface temperature increases by about 0.1 degrees Celsius during El Nino events. However, it's essential to note that not all El Nino events are severe, and some can be relatively mild. The typical duration of an El Nino event ranges from 9 to 12 months, though exceptionally long-lasting ones have persisted for years. The world's climate is a highly intricate system responding to various inputs, which is why the effects of El Nino should be viewed relative to what the baseline would be. Consequently, no two El Nino years are identical. Now, let's explore La Nina which represents the opposite phase of the El Niño Southern Oscillation. If El Niño is a warm event, La Niña is a cooler one, although some regions may experience warming. As mentioned earlier, El Niño occurs when the equatorial trade winds weaken. In contrast, during La Niña, the trade winds intensify. Think of El Niño as a disruption of the normal, and La Niña as an amplification of the normal. The strength in trade winds bring even more warm water from the coastal regions of South America towards Asia, leading to increased upwelling of cold, nutrient-rich water near the Americas. For fisheries, this results in a feeding frenzy, and cold water species like salmon venture into typically warmer waters where they wouldn't usually thrive. A similar phenomenon occurs with squid, in case you have a preference for calamari. In Asia, the influx of warm equatorial water during La Nina produces wet conditions, contrasting with the drought experience during El Nino. This leads to an increase in tropical cyclones. In North America, the jet stream shifts further north during La Nina, resulting in drought in the southwestern United States and increased rainfall in the Pacific Northwest. In 2022, La Nina exacerbated a mega drought in the southwestern United States, making it the most severe drought in 1,200 years. Visual evidence, such as the bathtub ring in Lake Mead, where the Hoover Dam is located, illustrates the impact of this prolonged dry spell. Now, you might be curious about how La Nina influences hurricane seasons. Depending on your location, the news can be either positive or negative. The Atlantic often experiences a more active hurricane season during La Nina, as the shift in the jet stream leads to greater atmospheric instability in the South Atlantic. However, the Pacific Basin witnesses fewer hurricanes during La Nina, underscoring the substantial regional variations in these effects. In the coastal regions of South America, you won't find the warm waters characteristic of Christmas time that prompted fishermen to name it El Nino de la Navidad. Similarly, there's a reason why fishermen refer to La Nina as El Viejo, or the Old Man. During La Nina, the weather in Peru and Chile becomes colder and drier, sometimes leading to severe droughts. Brazil's northern regions experience increased rainfall during the months from December to February, while the lowlands of Bolivia may face catastrophic flooding. In Africa, La Nina years bring conditions that are essentially the reverse of those during El Nino. East Africa tends to experience drier than usual conditions, while the South witnesses wetter than average conditions. Now, where do we stand in the NSO cycle? 
As of the making of this video, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, has announced the conclusion of an extended one-and-a-half-year La Nina. This determination is based on measurements of the difference in surface atmospheric pressure between the Western and Eastern Pacific, known as the Equatorial Southern Oscillation Index EKSOI. The latest reading of the EKSOE stands at just 0.1, down from one a year ago, signifying a return to near-normal conditions. While it's still early to provide a definitive forecast, there are already indications of a potential El Nino event later in 2023. Presently, NOAA is predicting a 60% likelihood of El Nino developing by autumn, which would have significant consequences. India is already cautioning its citizens about possible drought conditions. There's another reason to anticipate an El Nino in 2023, based on historical patterns. Since the beginning of tracking El Nino events in the 1950s, no period longer than four years has passed without an El Nino occurrence. If there isn't one in 2023, it would mark the first five-year gap without such an event. For me, this serves as an excellent example of how studying climate cycles can help us prepare and safeguard human survival, not only on our own planet, but potentially on other worlds as well. One intriguing aspect of the NSO is the insight it offers into the intricate interconnections of Earth's climate systems. Understanding the interplay of our planet's climate systems will be essential if we ever aspire to colonize other planets or engage in terraforming. Although that day may seem distant, it's never too early to begin dreaming. So there you have it, a comprehensive introduction to the El Nino Southern Oscillation. The ENSO can indeed have destructive effects on our planet's ecosystems and human populations. However, life is incredibly adaptable. Most likely, 2023 will contribute to our ever-growing understanding of these events. Have you noticed how El Niño or La Niña has affected your region? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. As I conducted research for this video, I found it valuable to enhance my knowledge of weather systems. Thank you for watching and a heartfelt thank you to my patrons and members. All the best, and I'll see you in the next video.